It's a bit surreal to be making this video, but after three years of sanding, sanding, some more sanding, and treating, I finally completed the refinishing of these mid-century dining chairs and table. When I first started this project, we just moved into this current apartment. I still had short hair and a lot has changed. Many of you have asked where I got my dining set from and I'm really happy to be finally showing this journey of turning these pre-loved pieces into a staple piece of furniture in my home. I love finding vintage pieces to fill my home and this was my first big woodworking project to make this dining set my own. This video isn't like my typical minimalism or sustainable living videos, but putting all this work into a dining set really put things into perspective and made me realize how valuable something can be when it's handmade and really taken care of. I hope you too, are inspired to choose pre-loved and perhaps make something your own. So this journey began when we discovered that we'd be moving into this apartment and I knew I wanted to transition more wood pieces into our very white minimal home to add warmth and dimension to what often felt like a sterile space. After weeks of searching the internet, I managed to stumble upon a set of mid-century bentwood chairs that someone's grandmother owned, and it totaled to $60 for all four. And then about a week later, I found a decently matching Danish teak dining table that someone else's grandmother owned that was $250. Going into this, my goal was to restore these wood pieces since they needed a bit of care and to also lighten the wood so it wouldn't feel too dark. It was an honor to try my best to give these family heirlooms a little lift and I loved the character they were bringing to the table, quite literally. I went into this project with minimal woodworking experience so if anyone has any woodworking advice for me, feel free to share below. But I knew from research and the advice I was given that the first order of business to refinish any wood piece is to go ahead and sand the finish off to get it to its natural state. I went about it by hand at first, using manual sandpaper to start. The chairs were very difficult to sand by hand, as it seemed that this particular finish was truly ingrained into the wood after years of use. But I managed to borrow my friend's orbital sander, which helped quicken the process. Though you only see a snippet of what was actually done, sanding these chairs took the most time, as it's very difficult to get the small crevices and corners sanded down. I did the same with the table, but it was much easier to just sand down this flat surface and the legs. It was through the process of sanding that I started to realize that these pieces revealed two very different types of wood. I'm still unsure of what the chairs are made of, but I know the table is made of teak. Though they were originally matching in the stain color, they're totally different underneath. It was interesting because the teak table actually had two different tones of wood and surprisingly, the legs were a little bit lighter than the tabletop. So I had to even it out with a bleach alternative called oxalic acid, which is naturally occurring in plants. It's often used as a stain remover for woodworking and can be applied and dried to help lighten wood. As with any chemical, be sure to wear proper safety equipment and gloves when applying. After a few coats, I noticed that the teak wood top was starting to lighten enough, not as much as I had hoped, but I began to embrace the warm caramel color this wood gave off. 
it was at this point that I started to see what the finished product would look like and I tried applying a homemade natural wood wax finish, which I had made myself. But unfortunately, the finish looked like the original color, which I wasn't hoping for. So I settled on a matte water-based clear coat by the brand Milk Paint, which ended up having a very similar finish to the legs after they were done. I ended up liking this result much more and I'll also link the product below. If you're curious about my DIY wood wax, it's a very simple recipe that is great for conditioning wood. It's food safe as well, so it can be used for cutting boards and wooden utensils if you'd like. I like to make mine using a double boiler on the stove, and I pour it into a small mason jar to store over time. It's made with a blend of walnut oil, beeswax, and carnauba wax. It can be applied with any clean cloth and rubbed in. I find that it's easier to rub in when it's a bit softened as well, so would recommend softening before applying to the wood. The recipe for a small batch is below, and you can feel free to multiply it if you like it. This type of finish will also wear off over time, so it's best to reapply this wood wax to recondition the wood regularly if your wood pieces do look dry. So the table was the first piece to be finished, sanded, and treated, but one by one, the chairs were also sanded down and refinished as well. It was quite difficult to sand down each chair due to the curvature, as well as what seemed to be machine marks that left these dark imprints on the wood. But I learned to embrace these imperfections of each of these pieces, realizing that the dark marks were not going to go away. I'm still not sure what type of wood this is, but the dark marks combined with the interesting texture of wood has a nice wabi-sabi feel to it once the wood wax is applied and it feels quite warm and worn in. It's not a perfect match to the table in that it's a slightly different tone of wood, but it's quite close and I'm learning to love this entire dining set as a whole more each and every day. The imperfections definitely add character and that's what I like about it. And so, while this side passion project has taken quite a while, literally years, I've learned to embrace all these imperfections, the charm of pre-loved pieces, and I am excited to continue to use this dining set for as long as I can. Perhaps if I too have grandchildren one day, they may also keep this dining set as a family heirloom. But whatever happens, I'm thankful for this journey and surprisingly enough, thankful for the slow, sometimes painfully slow progress that was made. It's through the slow journeys like these that I can learn to better appreciate how much thought and care is made to create something that is made to last. I hope you all enjoyed this little slice of my life. If you have any suggestions or want to see more of my woodworking endeavors or home projects, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Thanks all for watching and have a lovely day ahead.